422 million people around the world live with diabetes and 1.5 million deaths a year occur because of diabetes. So if you have no problem with promoting the sale of sugary drinks around the world and essentially partaking in population culling, then this might be the stock for you. I am of course talking about Coca-Cola and it is a dividend aristocrat. Most people invested in Coca-Cola are there for the dividend and have remained there for the dividend. Which proves that just like actual aristocrats, the people don't matter, it's all about profits. And speaking of profits, if you want to invest into companies that are making profits, if you want to make sure that the companies that you're investing into have solid fundamentals, then you definitely want to go check out stockscreen.app. It is an application which we are making available to the public later this year and it is a game changer for stock market investors. It basically allows you to not only look at the financials and the fundamentals and basically screen past all of the shit stocks and companies out there to make sure that you're investing in companies with good solid fundamentals that are making profits but also do value calculations to make sure that you're not overpaying for the companies that you're investing into. So definitely go and check out stockscreen.app. Uh, if you haven't gone and put yourself on the waiting list, definitely go and do it right now. This is going to be a game changer for stock market investors. So let's have a look at Coca-Cola and see how they have performed. If we go back on uh, the last couple of years, we can see that they have consistently grown in value. They've had a couple of dips here and there, but overall the stock has been pretty consistent in their pricing. Uh, of course, they've had highs of around uh, 65 falling back a little bit since then, but pretty much consistent, 59, 58, a little bit of a low here at 55, but the stock has been nothing but consistent in their pricing. And if we have a look at the overview of the stock, uh, we are looking at a market cap of 257 billion, enterprise of 309 billion, and a P ratio of 26, with a dividend of 2.95%. Having a look at the revenue, 42 billion, in the trailing 12 months, revenue 39 billion, equity 22 billion, net income 9.93 billion, so almost 10 billion. Uh, looking at the cash, 13.2 billion on hand, and free cash flow sitting at 10.05 billion. Looking at the uh, shares outstanding, we've got 4.35 billion shares outstanding. Insiders hold 0.67%. Short interest is 0.57 and institutional holdings sitting at 71.76%. And uh, of course, as we move down to our uh, cash flow statement, we can see that uh, even though it's been a little bit of inconsistency in the operating cash flow, it's still really good. They've gone 10.4 to 11.4 and that's gone... 10.4, 9.8, 12.6 to 11.4. So a little bit inconsistent, but still growth. And free cash flow, 8.4, 8.6, 11.2, 10.05. So a little bit of a fallback in the trading 12 months. Balance sheet has been good. 86, 87, 94, and 92. Equity gone 18, 19, 23, and 24. So consistent growth on uh, the equity. So looking very, very good. And then income statement, little bit of a fallback here in 2020, but they've corrected very well in 2021 in the trailing 12 months. Uh, 2019 revenue, 37.27 billion. Uh, revenue in the trailing 12 months, 42. So big jump up. They went 37, 33, 38, 42. Gross profit went 22, 19, 23, and 24. And uh, I think what's really important to point out is the gross margins here. Gross profit margins, exceptionally good. 24, 42, really good margin. And uh, obviously promoting diabetes is very profitable. So operating income, we're looking at 10.09, 9, 10.3, 10.51. And net income went 8.9 to 9.93. So consistent growth there as well barring 2020. And looking at the earnings per share, they went 2.06, full back in 2020, 1.79, to 2.25, and then to 2.28. So consistent growth here in the last two reporting periods. Shares outstanding, 4.32 billion, currently sitting at 4.35 billion. And then if we have a look at the fundamental scores, P ratio is just outside of our range, 26.15. Net margin, uh, 23%, so exceptionally good. Uh, net equity 22, uh, uh, obviously 22.8 billion, very, very positive uh, in terms of the equity and there has been shareholder dilution. This giving them a fundamental score of 50%. Looking at the debt, uh, if we look at that debt to equity ratio, 173, so it definitely is high. Current ratio is good though in terms of covering the short-term debt position and free cash flow 16% 
uh, over that uh, debt position. So 67% on the debt score. Momentum 17%. So they've been inconsistent on everything except for free cash flow. Uh, so top line revenue, middle line revenue, like I said, 2020 provide a little bit of instability for them. So 17%. And on the growth factor, return on equity 41%. Uh, return on asset 8.36%, which is not bad, but it's still below a benchmark of 10. Return on invested capital 12%, which is good. And the earnings per share compound annual growth is sitting at 2.52%. So not quite where we're looking for on uh, our growth factor of at least 10%. And then looking at the dividend, it is scoring 75%. Uh, the dividend uh, cost is less than free cash flow. The payout ratio is sitting at 86%. So it is a lot higher than where we'd be comfortable. Our benchmark is at least uh, 80%. So we don't want it to be greater than that. They're coming in at 86%. So that's where they're getting marked down. Dividend has been stable and it has increased over the last five years. So that gives them 75% on the dividend yield. Now, if we look at the valuation metrics, P26 price to book 12.13. Uh, price to sell 6.45 and price to free cash flow 25.66. Looking at the analysts, the analysts have them pegged at uh, seven hold ratings and seven buy ratings. So pretty much dead even down the middle with no sell ratings. And then if we look at our summary of the scorings, they are relatively good on fundamentals, 57, uh, 50%, 67 on debt, so strong on debt. Momentum is unproven at this point and growth is fair at 50%. So overall, not the greatest set of fundamentals, but definitely not bad. And this, of course, brings us to the question, value calculations. What do we believe the stock is worth? What do we believe it's valued at? Of course, the stock currently trading at 59.61. So this is where we're going to lead into, of course, some of these uh, calculations. And we're going to start with a free cash flow calculation because this is really the simplest here. They have a free cash flow multiple currently sitting of 25. That definitely is on the upper end of what we would be prepared to pay. So let's go to on the high end of 25, on the middle end of 20, and then we go to 15. And that's going to bring us out to a valuation of 46.24, which based on the free cash flow, we'd say they're probably about 22% overvalued. If we went to a very bullish case scenario, if we went 20, uh, 25, and 30, uh, which, again, because it is Coca-Cola, they've well established, you could make an argument for this. This would bring us out to a valuation of 5779, uh, which would still make it about 3% overvalued. So depending on how you look at it, one could say that it's probably somewhere between fairly valued and slightly overvalued based on the free cash flow calculation. So now let's look at the earnings per share, right? So the anticipation is that they will continue to grow at the current rate, which is between the order of four and 8%. So we're gonna have four, six, and eight on our growth factors. And in terms of the P ratio, we're gonna stick with 26, which is where they're currently valued at. And we're gonna discount in at 10. This brings us at a price point of 56.18, 56.18, which means that they're potentially about 5.75% overvalued. So if we had to go a little bit more aggressive on our growth rates, just to give you guys an indication, if we went 6, 8, and uh, 10 on the growth rates, uh, that would bring us out to a valuation of $60.14, giving us potentially about 0.89% margin. So in terms of where Coca-Cola is at at the moment, I believe that it is probably somewhere between slightly overvalued to fairly valued. I don't think it is anywhere near at a discount at this point. I don't think you're ever gonna pick up a stock like Coca-Cola at a significant discount. It is one of those stocks that uh, people know uh, is dependable in terms of the dividend yield, is dependable in terms of its stability, in terms of the pricing. And so if you are buying into it, it is probably going to be purely on the basis that you're looking for a capital preservation part of your portfolio rather than looking for any significant gains. Uh, and that should be your strategy if you're investing into this kind of stock. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the stock as a long-term hold. I have held it in the past, but uh, from my personal quips around uh, diabetes, you probably know my personal feelings. And with that in mind, uh, if you are interested in 
honest conversations around company stocks based on actual fundamentals without too much sentiment involved in the discussions then of course you should be subscribed to our channel if you aren't already so go ahead and hit that subscribe button and if you have any specific stocks that I haven't covered this week that you'd like me to cover make sure you drop me a comment in the comment section down below and uh, Money Tribe as always please hit that like button on the way out it really does help us with the YouTube algorithm and last but not least guys it is Friday so please make sure if you haven't already done so go and sign up for the early waiting list for stockscreen.app we have our first beta testers in there testing the system they're on a private telegram group we are talking in the group and let me tell you guys something this is going to be a game changer for stock market investors it is unlike anything that has ever been created and if you don't get on the early waiting list you really are going to miss out so go and join right now all you have to do is put your name and email address on the on the waiting list as soon as we decide to make this available to the public when we feel comfortable it's the right time to do that based on the the development pipeline then uh, that is the list where we're going to notify people first so have a great weekend and we'll see you guys back on monday